Good day everyone, Sam here from Farm Lab, and today I'll be doing an end-to-end -end run through, a beginning to end run through on how to set up a sample plan, sample and run the calculations for an Australian Clean Energy Regulator project. We get asked about this a lot. It's um, something that comes up quite frequently. We always provide a lot of handholding for clients that want to do this. And um, uh, it's a, I guess it's becoming more and more common these days to do, um, to run these projects. So without further ado, we'll jump in. Now we always start with the lot and DP numbers for the farm. So you can see I've got one here, I've called, D, called it DP1234 lot five, just a made up lot and DP number for somewhere in Australia. And this is really important, whether you're a carbon developer, agronomist or farmer, you start with the legal land titles for the farm. You can access these, most government, state government databases um, will provide these. In New South Wales, we have six maps. There's uh, some really good ones across Queensland and across uh, South Australia and Western Australia as well, uh, as well as Victoria and Tasmania here in Australia. So really critical starting point. Um, if you can, ex you can export them and then you can import them into FarmLab and uh, via a shape or KML file. If you have any issues importing, please let us know. The, the team will be more than happy to help you out. So once we've got that lot or NDP number in here, we can draw exclusion areas across any areas like dams, buildings, roads, um, or you can start by using the uh, stratification tool in farm lab to remove any areas of greater the greater than 20 percent tree cover which must be excluded from projects and uh, there's another video explaining exactly how to do that i won't do it in this case the next step once you're comfortable with the exclusion areas across the project area um, is determining your ceas you might split the, the, this area into one or more um, in this case, we'll just assume that the boundary itself is going to be the entire CEA or carbon estimation area for the project. Um, so in this case, I might actually just change this from a cadastral boundary type to boundary type of carbon estimation area, because that's going to form the carbon estimation area that I'm going to calculate and sample uh, carbon over. Once we've got that, um, once we're comfortable with the carbon estimation area, um, we go into stratification. Now stratification, uh, there's many, there's a variety of different ways to do it. We recommend starting with um, by stratifying based on soil type. We have found that soil type does tend to uh, indicate the variance of carbon. And when we're stratifying, we're really trying to capture that variance. So in farm lab, that's relatively simple to do. We can first start by running a survey on these boundaries to understand what, um, have a look at things like vegetation elevation and gamma radiometrics. These will help us understand um, and indicate whether, you know, these layers are telling us much about soil type or maybe they're being thrown off for another reason. So there's vegetation, there's elevation, and then we've got our K gamma is usually a good starting point for, for a gamma perspective. And we go into, you know, these layers in more detail in a different different section in a different video. So in this case, uh, looking through these layers, we might just start by stratifying using vegetation and elevation. Really common for farm the size to do that. Um, vegetation and seas, which are remotely sensed from satellites, do give us you know, um, a good picture as to where the good and well-performing and poor-performing soils are. So they can help in first soil type. Um, and uh, to stratify is relatively simple. We simply click, click the, the boundary, we click stratify boundaries, and choose the number of strata. In a clean energy regulator project, the minimum number of strata is three. We could go four or five, depending on um, expense, because there will be more sampling required, maybe slightly more sampling required across more strata. Um, we want to try and match this up to the number of soil types we have. In our case, we'll go elevation NDVI, and if we're happy with that, we press start and we've got cut to one we've prepared earlier. So if we clear that, we can have a look at this strata here using elevation and NDVI. So we can see that we've now got three strata that we can use for our clean energy regulator project. Um, 
if we're not happy with this, or we take this to the farmer, the client, and they come back and say, oh, I'd like, like a few adjustments. I don't think the soil type is quite quite right. Then of course, rerun it. The whole point of this tool is to um, get as close as possible to what's at the farmer's head, um, or the person that knows as much as possible about the farm uh, when it comes to developing the soil type. So obviously these strata don't just have to be used for clean energy regulator projects. This can be used for variable rate application and other bits and pieces. Um, to, to use these strata now, I simply click make boundaries from strata. It'll load for a second and there we go. I have my three strata boundaries just here. So once we have the strata boundaries, we now have our sample plan, the first stage of our sample plan completed and ready to be submitted to the clean energy regulator. Now, there is one thing missing here. Some of, some of you may, may have picked up that we haven't generated any sample points as yet. That's because the sample plan itself, the strata, the lot and DP numbers, um, and of course the project have to be submitted and approved by the regulator before the sample points are generated. In fact, as part of that, and we do provide guidance on how to do this and how to work with the clean energy regulator, we're in constant discussions with them to make sure that our tools are up to their standards. Um, uh, you must get approval for how you generate, how you plan to generate the random sample points. And so um, there's a few, few tips and tricks we have, which I won't go into in this video. Once the regulator come back and accept the, this, the initial sample plan, we can now go in and generate our sample sample points and that's very simple we simply select the strata that we want to generate generate them over and select generate point locations so we generate point locations across the strata let's say I want three points per strata and I want two reserve points and I want that per strata so I'm going to tick this little box generate per boundary and then you have a seed number and this is where having this is what you need to uh, confirm with the regulator in advance you can't just make up a seed um, the regulator have to approve the seed number you're going to use in advance and to make make it a bit more tricky um, you uh, it can't be predicted as well so again we'll go into that in a bit more detail separately and if you need a hand or assistance please reach out to support at farmlab.com.au and we can talk you through that in a bit more detail in this case we'll just enter the seed number one two three four five now for each of these sample points we're going to sample uh, to a depth of 30 centimeters, we'll save that, and then to a depth of really as deep as we can go. But I'll say I'll say 100 centimeters here for now. So we'll have two samples at each point that we generate. One is zero to 30, the other's well, not zero to 100. It's 30 to 100. There we go. And we hit start, and that'll go away and generate some sample points. There we go. If we go in, we've got some here that I've generated already, but I'll show you the ones we've just we've just generated. If we go to proposed, there we can see all the sample points around the map that have been generated. I can go in, I can accept those. In this case, I'm going to reject those because there's already some there. And we'll clear those points. Now we'll go back into our sample plan. So um, once those points are generated, uh, we can go out and sample, and that's where the mobile app comes into it. We'll save the mobile app uh, walkthrough for another day, but uh, the mobile app will guide you to the points. The important thing with the mobile app is that um, you are using an external GPS to get that little sub four meter accurate um, accuracy when you are sampling. It is a requirement under the Clean Energy Regulator program. So. Uh, in our case, here's one I prepared earlier. We've gone out and we've sampled each of these individual sites here. I've got three across each of the strata. If I turn our layer back on through this menu, you can see green. We've got the green points here. One, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. So there's a minimum of three samples required per strata. We could have done more. Uh, you can't do less, but you could do more. Uh, and you might do more depending on the, the size of the area. Um, and again, there's a few tips and tricks. We will work closely with our clients to help them understand or help them uh, determine the, the optimal number of sample points across, across an area, um, because it can be tricky. Um, it does depend on the variation of soil, depends on the area, depends on a whole range of factors here. 
in our case we've gone with three um, now if I had any I could uh, if I had any unsubmitted samples after the uh, sampling job is complete I could go in and I could submit my samples I could click clicking this button here obviously I have no unsubmitted samples so I don't have any, any anything I can tick but um, we go through this in another video this is where you can submit samples quickly and easily to a soil testing lab for testing you physically mail the sample off uh, but the labs uh, will receive the metadata and then they will upload the results straight back into FarmLab. We work quite closely with them to give them access to our infrastructure to do that. And all that means is that you don't have to muck around with spreadsheets and uploading, but importantly, it also gives you a complete chain of custody around who sampled the soil, when they sampled it, if they, as long as they use the mobile app, which lab tested it, were they accredited, what was the test that was done, and when the results came back. And this is really important stuff later on down the track in the project, um, particularly when it comes to auditing and audit compliance. And we are now just working with auditors to help give them access to hopefully reduce the cost of auditing in clean energy regulator projects. So we've got our results back. We can go, we can run through our results down here. So the initial results that will come back will be things like percentage of organic carbon, air dry mass, and the other requirements um, that that uh, clean energy the clean energy regulator stipulate. You need to calculate the tons of carbon across um, across a sample round uh, for a project. So here's our percentage carbon across each of these each of these sites. We've got um, now just just bear in mind most of this. Um, oh, here we go. Total organic carbon, not. Um, percentage carbon. Now a lot of this data is um, we've just fabricated for the sake of the demo so please don't you know don't, don't look at this and say that oh, this should be higher this should be lower. Now um, we'll go into now that we've got our results across the farm uh, we need to calculate we need to convert the percentage carbon into the tons of carbon. We can do that through the results that have come back through our soil testing labs. So if you're submitting um, uh, there is a requirement to submit your samples to a lab that is compliant with the Clean Energy Regulator. Again, we can help you identify that. Um, we have the tests clearly outlined when you do go to submit them in Farm Lab, so it's relatively simple to just pick the Clean Energy Regulator test um, because you will get the right results back that can then be used for the calculation. Um, and, uh, and that includes things, as I mentioned before, like air dry mass and percentage carb and water content, gravel content of the soil as well. So once we have that, we can go in and we can run the analysis, the, um, the calculations that allow us to determine the tons of carbon across each of the strata that, that I've developed um, now for the project. Now that we've got our results, we need to run a sample round. So to run a sample round is simple, you simply enter the sample round details. For a baseline sample round, we usually call it zero, um, and uh, we can set a date here. So if I've got samples that were collected, if I've got two sample rounds here, well, I only want to make sure we're collecting the, we're analysing the results from the last sample round. So we might say, well, you know, the last sample round was in 2019, so we'll go from 2020 to 2022 to capture the current sample round. We'll call this sample round one. Hit save. Now we can enter our carbon estimation area ID. So in this case, we've only got one CEA, but if we had more, this you know, we'd have one, two, or three. We can calculate the results across each. I'll hit save. And again, we've got uh, because we've created all our strata in FarmLab, this is nice and simple. I enter my strata ID. Strata one there, strata two, strata three, and the boundaries that correspond are, of course, strata one, strata two, strata three. And then simply hit run, and this will tally up all of the samples across each of the strata uh, really quickly and easily, and um, generate, uh, run the calculations required under the Australian Clean Energy Regulator to determine the amount of carbon across each of the strata and, of course, across the carbon estimation area. So greater one I prepared earlier uh, and here we go so this here we have a quick summary at the bottom around how much carbon is across each of the um, uh, CEAs we only have one CEA here uh, we'll start from the bottom this is from 30 centimeters and below and this says we have 17 tons of carbon per hectare and 522 tons of carbon in total at 0 to 30 centimeters we have 
uh, 71 tonnes of carbon per hectare in 2,195. And then the summary of that at the full profile is 2,700 tonnes of carbon and um, 324 tonnes of CO2 equivalent per hectare. And this is important because the difference between this sample round today, 324 tonnes of CO2 equivalent, and let's say in three years time, you know, we might have 500 tonnes of CO2 equivalent in the earth. Well, that, that difference there, 500 minus 324, is going to be how many carbon offsets I generate. Of course, we do have to subtract any additional farm emissions from that figure there as well. And that's a, uh, another upcoming feature. So if you wanted to download this to be audited or give to the regulator, we can click this button. It will export results to an Excel spreadsheet. Um, we can view the samples that we use to create this as well, just for, again, auditing purposes. And we can go back, importantly, and um, review any of those uh, those results on the map here. And um, particularly for the next sample round where we may want to regenerate the strata, we can use these to build better strata to have more accurate strata for future sampling rounds. So really exciting there. Um, and that's it. That's an end-to-end -end run through of how we run a sample round for a clean energy regulator soil carbon project. Um, yeah, if you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Cheers.